Copernicus says the Earth revolves around the Sun. Had he had access to telescopes that would be developed not that many decades later, let alone to the instruments we have for searching the heavens today, he would have understood immediately that that suggestion was ridiculous, right? And so what we're talking about here you, is... You think you mean vice versa? Got, excuse me, I've got it the other way around. I've got it the other way yeah. around. Copernicus is the, Copernicus is the one who correct... Tal the old Ptolemaic system. Right. Ah, okay, yes. so Tal the Ptolemaic system, which persists until what? Fort the, we, I don't want to get Galileo mixed in all this, but we get this, get like this into yeah. the 16th century. Yeah. Telescope, which Copernicus, Copernicus figures out that that's partly because of the technology. He can see what they couldn't see before. All right, so Darwin's a little 170 some years ago, and they, it was plausible that the little tiny cell was a blob of jello in the old days. But now, thanks to Behe here, we can look into that cell, and we have the same experience going into smaller and smaller dimensions that telescopes had going into the larger and larger dimension, which is every time we look, it becomes more complicated, deeper, richer, more mind-boggling. Is that roughly correct? That's roughly right, and it's, it starts it's back in the... importantly correct. Yeah, it starts back in the 1950s, you know, with Watson and Crick, mm -hmm. and what uh, historians of science now call the molecular biological revolution. Uh, they, of course, elucidated the double helix structure of the molecule. They discovered the language. Exactly. They, yeah. discover, they discovered the structure of the molecule in 1953, but it's Crick who makes the important breakthrough in 1958. He was a code breaker in World War II. And he formulates something called the sequence hypothesis. And he proposes that the four chemical subunits that run along the interior of the DNA molecule, are they're, they're called nucleotide bases, or just bases. The, he proposes, proposes that they are functioning like alphabetic characters in a written text, or like, for example, the zeros and ones in a section of software today. That is to say, they perform a function as a group, not in virtue of any of their physical properties, but in virtue of their sequential arrangement in accord with an independent symbol convention, later discovered and now known as the genetic code. And in, over the ensuing seven or eight years, Crick's sequence hypothesis was confirmed by a series of experiments on both sides of the Atlantic, and that gave us this new informational understanding. The information revolution came to biology, because what we realized is that in, inside the cell, we have a, a complex information storage, transmission, and processing system. And to explain the origin of life, you've got to explain that. And to explain any new form of life, you've got to explain how you can take a section of code, randomly change it, and hope to come up with another section of code without destroying the function of the so, code you started so with. The